So in this video I'm going to talk about the Weierstrass M-test. So this is named for the great mathematician Weierstrass who contributed hugely to the development of the theory of analysis. So this is a test that we can apply to series of functions now, which are of course just sequences of functions in disguise. The sequence is the sequence of partial sums of functions. And if a series of functions satisfies the criteria of the Weierstrass M-test, then you're able to conclude two things. One, that the series of functions converges pointwise, and in terms of the series at each point, converges absolutely. And two, you're able to conclude that overall the series of functions converges uniformly to the limit function. So let's say then that we have a sequence of functions that we'll call fn. Let's say they're all defined on some domain which we'll call d, which is some subset of the real line, and they're all real valued functions. Then we can consider the series of functions, which is the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of these functions, and we can ask, does this series of functions converge? Does it have a limit? And of course, a series of functions is just a sequence of functions in disguise. The sequence we're really interested in is the sequence of partial sums, which again is a sequence of functions. So uh, the first term of this sequence of partial sums would be where you've just added one of these together. So you've just got the function f1. Then the second term would be the function which is f1 plus f2. Then the third one would be f1 plus f2 plus f3. And then the fourth one would be f1 plus f2 plus f3 plus f4. And it would continue on. And then you're interested in this whether this sequence of partial sums converges to a limit, and if it does, that's what we say the limit of the series of functions is. So the Weierstrass M-test then says that if there exist these M-values, and this is the reason the test is called the M-test, because we call these values the M-values. So these M-values are all just real numbers that are non-negative, so they're real numbers that are greater than or equal to zero, and you're going to need more than one of them. You're going to need one for each one of your functions that is a term in your series. So you'll have M subscript 1, which corresponds to the function F1. You'll have M2, which will correspond to your function F2, m3, which will correspond to your function f3, etc. So you'll need one for each one of the functions. So you need to be able to find a non-negative m value for each one of the functions that is a term in the series, such that if you look at your corresponding function in your series, and you look at what values it obtains over the domain, and you look at the absolute value of these values, it is always bounded by your m value. So it means that we need to be able to find an m value that bounds each one of the functions in the terms, in each one of the functions that is a term in the series uh, for the entire domain. So if you can find these m values, and then if you look at the sum or the series from n is equal to 1 to infinity of all the m values, if that series converges to some finite limit l, then you can conclude that the series of functions does indeed converge pointwise everywhere, that it converges pointwise absolutely in terms of series definition of absolute convergence, and moreover that the sequence of partial sums here converges uniformly to this limit f. So I've drawn a picture to help explain this. So um, here this is supposed to represent the domain of our function. It's quite a simple domain, just the closed interval there. And then we've got one of these functions that is a term in the series, and I've just called it f7 for an example, and then what this is saying is that each one of these functions that is in the series needs to be bounded above and below, so you need to be able to find this m value that bounds the function. So if you draw uh, a line at the value m7 and a line at the value negative m7, then the function needs to lie in between those two lines. So each one of the functions in our series needs to be bounded. You need to find an m value that bounds it. And then if you look at the series of real numbers of all of these m values, that needs to be a convergent series of real numbers to some finite value, which we'll call L. And if that is the case, if you can find such m values where the series converges in this way, then you can conclude that your series of functions does indeed converge everywhere over the domain. So it has some limit function. It's going to converge absolutely pointwise. 
uh, in terms of series definition of absolute convergence and um, this series of functions converges uniformly to this limit, i.e. the sequence of partial sums converges uniformly to this limit. That's why it's called a test, because I'm testing whether my series of functions is convergent or not, uh, and indeed uniformly convergent, and if I can show that it satisfies this criterion, the Weierstrass m-test criterion, then I can instantly conclude that my series of functions does indeed converge everywhere on the domain, and it converges uniformly. So let's now start proving the Weierstrass m-test. So we want to prove that if this criterion of the Weierstrass m-test is satisfied, then we can conclude that the series of functions does converge and converges uniformly to the limit. So firstly what I'm going to do is show that if this is satisfied, then the series of functions does at least converge pointwise, and then after we've done that, we'll go on to the stronger form of convergence, which is uniform convergence. So for pointwise convergence, what I need to do is take a point in my domain, so I've got an x in my domain d, and we're going to do this for a general point so that actually our proof is going to hold true for all of the points in the domain, so we'll know that the uh, series of functions does converge pointwise everywhere in the domain. And now what I need to do is take my series of functions and now evaluate all of the functions at my point x and then I'll end up not with a series of functions but with a series of real numbers. So that's what I've done here. So I've now got the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of fn evaluated at x. This is now a series of real numbers and of course the proper meaning of this converging means that the sequence of partial sums converges. So the sequence of partial sums is going to be f1 evaluated at x and then f1 evaluated at x plus f2 evaluated at x and then f1 evaluated at x plus f2 evaluated at x plus f3 evaluated at x and so on. The fourth term would have four uh, f1 evaluated at x plus f2 evaluated at x plus f3 evaluated at x plus f4 evaluated at x. And I need to ask does that sequence of partial sums converge? And of course, this sequence of partial sums corresponds completely with what the sequence up here of partial sums of functions evaluated at my point x would be. So this sequence of partial sums of functions, of course, is the formal meaning of this series of functions. And therefore, when I'm evaluating it at x, um, I just need to take this sequence of partial sums and evaluate it at x. Of course, that corresponds with this because they're just the same thing. So proving that this series converges is actually very simple. I just need to use the comparison test for series convergence. You see, I know because I've assumed that the Weierstrass m-test criterion is satisfied that whatever fn evaluated at x is, if I take its absolute value, it must be less than or equal to the corresponding m value, so mn. This holds true for all n is an element of the natural numbers. So for f1, it will hold true that the absolute value of f1 evaluated at my x point is going to be less than or equal to m1. For f2, it will hold true that the absolute value of f2 evaluated at x will be less than or equal to m2 because x is just one of the points in the domain and I know that everywhere over the domain, the function fn, absolute value of it, is less than or equal to the corresponding m value, n m n. Now, I also know by this assumption here that the sum of all the m values, the series of m values, does converge and it converges to this finite value L. So now what I can do is apply the comparison test. So because I know that all of these things for all n are less than or equal to all of these things, and I know that if you sum up all of these things, it converges to a finite value, then by the comparison test I can conclude that the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of the absolute value of fn evaluated at x is also convergent and it converges to something that is less than or equal to what the sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity of mn converges to. So I know now that this series, the sum of the absolute values of these things, is a convergent series. And now by absolute convergence, we're able to conclude that the original series without the absolute values also converges. So if you have any series and you know that the absolute version of the series, where you take all the terms and take their absolute values, if you know that series converges, then you're able to conclude that the original series converges. In fact, you say that the original series converges not just normal convergence, but converges absolutely if you know that the series of absolute values of it converges.
So we can conclude that this series does converge, and it converges more than just normal convergence, it converges absolutely for all x is in the domain. And just a quick reminder of why it's the case that if the series converges in the absolute sense, then you can conclude that the non-absoluted version of the series converges. It's because if this one converges, then you know it obeys the Cauchy criterion, i.e. its sequence of partial sums is a Cauchy sequence. And then from that fact and the triangle inequality, you're then able to conclude that the sequence of partial sums where you don't have absolute values is absolutely always going to be a Cauchy sequence also. Um, so this one being a Cauchy sequence of partial sums implies that this one will also be a Cauchy sequence of partial sums, and hence you can conclude that this one's sequence of partial sums must converge, and so the series does converge. So I know now that my series of functions does converge pointwise everywhere on my domain, and in terms of pointwise series convergence, it doesn't just converge, but I can also say it converges absolutely. We'll have a break here, and in the next video we'll go on to show that the series of functions converges uniformly to its limit.